How's it going everybody? So today I have another algorithm video, number of connected components in an undirected graph. This question is asked at Amazon and Facebook. It's a relatively easy problem in comparison to other graph questions, but it is very useful because you can actually solve this using union find. And this is a very good introductory problem to learn the union find data structure. So before I get into the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. Our description says, given n nodes labeled from 0 to n minus 1 and a list of undirected edges, each edge is a pair of nodes, write a function to find the number of connected components in an undirected graph. Like I mentioned before, we're going to use union find to solve this problem. So if you don't know what union find is, that's okay. I have a video that I released last week that goes over five data structures to learn, and one of them is union find. So feel free to check out that video to better understand how that data structure works. But to summarize, union find is a data structure used to perform operations on non-overlapping disjoint subsets. So for this problem, we need to count how many connected components we have inside of our graph. So let's say we have the following graph. In this example, we would have two different components. The first component being from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and the second component being from 3 to 4. We have a total of five nodes, so n is equal to 5, and each node is labeled from 0 to n minus 1, and we will never have duplicate values. And this graph visually is equivalent to the following edges. So we have an array containing the numbers 0 and 1. What that means is we have node 0 connected to node 1 and node 1 connected to node 0. Edge 1, 2, same thing, 1 connected to 2, 2 connected to 1, and then finally 3 and 4, 3 is connected to 4, 4 is connected to 3. The main idea behind union find is every subset has a parent that it points to. So if we merge all connected subsets together, and at the end, count how many subsets we have in total, we will have our answer. That will be the number of components that we have in this graph. I know that may sound confusing, so let's go over this in detail. Let's say we initialize an array of size 5. We have a total of 5 nodes, and each value in this array is the parent to the node at that index. So initially, we have all of the nodes pointing to themselves. 0 points to 0, 1 points to 1, 2 points to 2, and so on. What this is saying, if we look at index 0, is we have the 0 node pointing to the 0 value. What this means is that 0 is its own subset. 0 is pointing to the 0 parent. Same thing for 1, 2, 3, 4. They're all pointing to themselves. So right now, we have a total of five separate subsets. And this is just to initially create our union find data structure. So we have these five subsets now initialized. Now all we need to do is loop over all of the edges that we were given and merge those subsets together. By the end of iterating over these edges and performing merges, we should have only two subsets, where 0, 1, 2 is its own subset, and then 3, 4 is its own subset. So let's iterate over these edges. We have an I pointer that's starting at the 0th index of this 2D array, which is 0, 1. What we need to do is merge the 0 and 1 subset together to just be one subset. The reason why is because 0 is connected to 1, 1 is connected to 0, those should be part of the same subset, right? So the way we're going to merge two subsets is make one subset's parent point to the other parent. It's a very simple operation to merge subsets. So we're going to check what is the parent of node 0? Well, that's just 0. What is the parent of node 1? That's just 1. And now we just need to set one of these parents to point to the other. We know we are looking at the parent of a subset if the index is equal to the value at that index. So we're going to assign 0 to point to the parent of node 1. And by doing that, we have successfully merged the 0 and 1 subset to just be containing the subset 0 and 1. Next, we move to the edge 1, 2, and we find the parent of node 1 to just be 1. We find the parent of node 2 to just be 2. Just like before, we're going to assign the parent of one of the nodes to the other. So we assign node 1's parent to be 2. Now what we have done 
is we've combined the zero and one subset with the two subset. So now we have zero, one, two as being part of one subset. And then finally, we go to the edge three, four. Three's parent is three, it's just pointing to itself. Four's parent is four, also pointing to itself. So we're going to assign three's parent to just be four. And what that does is it combines the subset three and subset four to just be one subset of three and four. Okay, so we've successfully iterated over all of our edges and essentially just created a bunch of subsets. Now, in order to determine which ones are connected or not, all we need to do is follow the paths to count how many unique parents we have. So we have node zero, which has a value of one. This means that node zero is not the parent and we must continue down that path. So since it has a value of one, we now need to look at index one and that has a value of two. Once again, the index is not equal to the value. So then we look up index two. However, at this position, index two is equal to the value and that means that node two is our parent. So now we add node two to our set and using path compression, we can now set zero to point directly to node two. That way, if we ever have to find the parent at node zero again, we are only one step away. You can think of path compression as a way to smooth all of the objects inside of our subsets. We could obviously leave node zero to point to node one, and then we would you know, go down that normal path that we just did, or we just assign zero to point directly to our parent. If we didn't use path compression, our time complexity would actually increase. So this is a very important step of the union find data structure. Now we move to node one. However, our value is two. That means node one cannot be the parent. So we move to index two, and now we found our parent because index two is equal to the value at that index. However, we already have a parent two inside of our set so we don't have to do anything. Then we're gonna move our pointer to index two, and that has a value of two, which means that is apparent. However, we already have a two inside of our set. Next, we move to node three. Its value is four. The index is not equal to the value, so node three is not the parent. We move to index four, and we find that the value is equal to the index, so we found our parent. Now we just need to add four inside of our set. Finally, we move to node four, and once again, the index is equal to the value. However, we already added four inside of our set, so we don't have to do anything. And now all we need to do is extract the size of our set because that is how many components we will have. So right now we only have two and four as the parents of these subsets, so we would return two from our function. Okay, so let's implement the code for this solution. Right now we are given an integer n. This is just telling us how many nodes that we have. And then we have a 2D array, which gives us all of the edges in our graph. The first thing we wanna do is create that array that we talked about in the very beginning. We are going to point every node to its parent. So to do that, we're gonna say int, and we can just call this array IDs equals new int and it's going to be of the size of however many nodes that we have, which is n in this case. Initially, we're going to point all nodes to themselves. So we're gonna have zero pointing to zero, one pointing to one, and so on. So to do that, we need to loop over all of our IDs. So we're gonna say i is less than ids.length, and we say id at the index i is equal to i. So at this point, view each node as its own subset. We need to start merging those subsets based on the edges that we were given. We are solving this problem using union find, so to no one's surprise, we're gonna have two different functions, union and find. So union, we're not gonna be returning anything. We're going to take in two edges and then the IDs array that we created. So we're gonna say int edge one, int edge two, and then the IDs. So we'll come back and implement that. And then as for our find, we're going to be returning an integer. This is pretty much just returning the parent. So we're going to be taking in an edge and then we're gonna pass in the IDs. Oh, and then this also needs to be called IDs. And so we're gonna take in the edge and the IDs 
and we're going to say, hey, this is our parent. So for example, at index zero, we have the value zero. So if we passed edge zero into this function, we would return zero because we're returning the parent of that edge. Okay, so now we need to loop over all of our edges and union all of these subsets. So pretty simple. All we need to do is say edge of edges. We're going to union edge at index zero, edge at index one, and then we pass in our IDs. So after merging all of these subsets together, we just need to count how many unique parents that we have. So to do that, let's initialize a set. And now we need to loop over all of our IDs and determine what the parent is at each index. So let's do in i is equal to zero. We're gonna loop up to ID's length. And then we're gonna say set.add find IDs at index i, and then we're gonna pass IDs into the function. Because remember, our find function is going to return the parent of that edge. And the set will make sure that we always have unique parents. By the end of iteration, all we need to do is just say return set.size, and that will be the number of connected components that we have in our graph. Now, all we need to do is implement our union and find functions. So starting with union, we need to find the parent of edge one, find the parent of edge two, and then assign one of the parents to point to the other one. So to do that, we could say int parent one equals to find edge one, and then pass in IDs. So we're going to find the parent of edge one. We're gonna do the same thing for edge two. Find me the parent of edge two, pass in IDs. And now we just need to set parent one equal to parent two. So we can say IDs at parent one index is equal to parent two. And now that successfully merges those two subsets. And now we just need to implement this find function. So remember, a parent is when the index is equal to the value at that index. So all we need to do is say if IDs at edge is not equal to edge, because this would mean that edge is not a parent. IDs of edge is equal to find IDs edge and then pass in IDs. So what this line is doing is actually path compression, what we talked about earlier. This is going to make sure that we're always smoothing out our connections to our parents. If the edge we are looking at is not the parent, we're going to call this function recursively and reassign that edge's parent. And then when we come out of this if statement, we know that that edge must be a parent. So all we need to do is just say return IDs at that edge. And then I just realized I made two mistakes. So the find needs to pass in I, because I is the edge. And then this also needs to be called IDs. It's not ID. So let's make sure this solution works. So our time complexity is going to be n plus m times log of n, where m is the number of edges we were given, and n is the number of nodes that we have. So keep in mind, we were only able to achieve this time complexity because we utilized path compression on line 19. If we did not utilize path compression, our time complexity would be closer to n times m. Also, we could do an extra optimization, which is known as union by rank, and that would give us a time complexity of n plus m times the amortized log of n. And so amortized log of n is essentially just constant. So it would be n plus m. I decided to leave the union by rank optimization out because like I said, this is a good introductory problem to union find. Our space complexity is going to be big O of n where n is the number of nodes we have. On line number three, we have to create an array of size n to keep track of all of our subsets. So that is it for this video. You guys made it through another graph problem. I know they can be pretty difficult. So don't forget to check out my Discord channel. I'm planning to set up a meeting this week or the next 
to solve leak code questions together and pretty much just hang out. I'm gonna be releasing a lot more videos, including algorithms, tips, and just a bunch of tutorial videos. So definitely tune in for that, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.